our customers are looking for people that know how to solve the problems they're faced with today. And the problems they're faced with are very complex products. Our customers are coming to us looking for engineers that understand how to use this software. Industry 4.0 is really looking at what it takes to think about every aspect of what it takes to take a product to market. The strategic relationship with schools and universities really started with Industry 4.0 and then that transformation to Academia 4.0. And what that caused us to do is transform the way people learn. I think the biggest challenge facing engineering colleges across the country is balancing the theory with the application. My role as Associate Dean is to make sure students have the connection with industry to get the tools they need to be competitive once they graduate. So having a partnership with companies like Siemens has allowed us to jumpstart our student experience and transition into the workforce. Siemens PLM Software is really committed to work with the academia. We do that through relationships with uh, universities. But also for us it's important because it enables product innovation in the ideation process. A lot of university systems are still set up in their conventional silos. The mechanical engineering department, the aerospace engineering department, the electrical engineering department, the chemical engineering department. You need to be able to go across those domains comfortably. We have to have an engineer that can think about not only how we create the initial idea, how we potentially manufacture this, how do we leverage the feedback we get from the product, how do we bring that into an R&D process. Things like additive manufacturing, systems-driven product development. We can help our customers find the type of skill sets that meet the needs of the emerging trends and things that are happening in industry today. Working at the intersection of disciplines is becoming more and more critical to be successful for companies to implement digitalization. Siemens has a whole suite of software that covers the entire PLM cycle. So we want to take everything and see if we can permeate into every classroom in conjunction with the simulation, industry experts working with us on actual problems with Siemens simulation software to demonstrate to the students. To see designs go back and forth between these different disciplines, You're trying to find the most beautiful thing that you can still make money at. That's teaching kids an interesting problem way early in their career. What we want to do is see how we can train them at the university that gets them up and running both in what the industry does with respect to software and how industry practices are done while reinforcing the academic concepts and the theory here. So it has to be a blend of both. They realize we'll hire their students if they have the right skills. They want to teach them those skills. Being able to depict a real world environment through the competition we engage them in, in these kinds of experiences, then when they see them in the real world, it's like the aha moment. And the tools that Siemens provided to my students, to my team, and the training with which they learned to use these tools has been fundamental to our success. So students like it because it's practical. We, we like it because we find the students that are worth hiring. This experience has given me a taste of reality, but more importantly, like it, it's preparing me to become a better engineer in the future. The first couple days that they were there at work, they were actually able to contribute almost immediately. I knew how to work with Siemens you know, products before leaving my university. I've been very fast paced with my new job, my new role, and I've been learning so quickly that my, my boss is impressed. And it's all because you know I had previous experience with the software. We talk to our customers, they want someone that can think holistically about the entire process. What really makes us different is, is that we look at this problem of complex design holistically in the multi-physics part of the problem, mechanical, electrical, software coming together. We're the only ones that have that complete solution today. While we're still teaching the basics in the core curriculum, now we take the examples and we take the labs, we transform them to real-world examples from today and then they can solve something that's happening today. That's very powerful. If you can use Siemens software, you're ready for everything. You've already validated yourself. Good morning, uh, dear professors, instructors, 
students. I can also read uh, somebody from Aklan State University. Uh, there is also from CIT University. Maayong buntag kaninyo. So my name is uh, Jerome Castaneda. I am the Business Development Officer of Stanford IT Learning, uh, Training Division of CIM Technologies. So I will be your host uh, for this event. Perhaps uh, you can type in a good morning from uh, your school, similar to what uh, the other, so we can also know where are you coming from. So, but of course, first, no, first we would like to say thank you for joining for joining us in this uh, very interesting and very informative event, the future of engineering education, how academia can close the engineering skills gap in the age of digitalization. So uh, this morning, uh, let me share you what you will be expecting. So for today's agenda, First, I'll be discussing a, just a brief background about our company, C CIM Technologies, and our Stanford IT Learning. And then I will introduce you to our uh, the main speaker, C Engineer Prof. Johannes Pasqua, about the future of engineering education. So this will be followed by our applications engineer, Engineer Per Gonzalez. So you talk about uh, solid edge. Uh, then we'll have a, a, a Q and A uh, forum from our panel of speakers. So please be sure to type your uh, questions, your Q and A in the chat box. And then next we'll be having our announcements and promotions. So the last part, of course, uh, the much awaited for some would be our raffle prices. So there will be four grab vouchers and SE uh, training vouchers, okay? So let me introduce our company, CIM Technologies. So CIM Technologies is one of the country's pioneers in providing cutting edge technology you know, for both software and hardware. So we provide training, we provide technical support, and services for both the manufacturing as well to the architecture, engineering, and constructions. So. Here in Stanford IT Learning, so this is where I belong, is a training division of CIM Technologies. So our aim here is to equip you, uh, students, uh, train teachers, even of course the engineers, architects, with the necessary industry skills so that you'll be able to maximize your product design, product development tools, and our project management software. So our partners, our main partner for today is actually Siemens. So we would like to say thank you for Siemens. So uh, we also have other partners in our portfolio. Okay, so yeah, you can see Dell and HP. So what we offer, uh, training courses. So we offer Solid Edge Fundamentals, Solid Edge Advanced, of course, for uh, the manufacturing. And we also cater for the AEC market or the architectural engineering and construction, mainly Revit. Uh, and EP structure architecture. We also, of course, as I mentioned a while ago, the project management uh, tools, Primavera, and the Navis work, and 3D Studio Max. So we also offer uh, rendering and visualization, animation. Of course, we provide you the certification exam, you know, so that you'll be really qualified uh, user, qualified professional. And we utilize our online learning uh, services. Okay, so for our next activity, let me introduce our main speaker. So he has been in the academia for 22 years. 
He is currently a professor and also a registered electronics and communications engineer. So he has these specializations in embedded systems and development. So in Internet of Things, uh, wireless sensor researches at the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. No? That's in CDO, Cagayan de Oro. He is also the co-founder and the project lead of Shiftech Marine Engineering Services. So this is a company making energy efficient and renewable technologies. So without uh, further ado, please let us all welcome engineer and professor Eugenes Armando Pasqua. Okay, so good morning each and everyone. So welcome to our webinar, which is the future of engineering education. Okay, so um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so I'm here. Actually, I'm Joannes Armando Pasqua. As thank you for the good introduction for uh, for uh, letting the audience know what I'm who I am. So thanks, Jerome. So Jerome and I have been good friends since 2017. No? So we met in a lot of uh, innovation meetups and also uh, innovation competitions. So I'm here to talk about how can academia close the engineering skills gaps in the age of digitalization, specifically how to apply digitization and industry relevant outcomes based education in engineering. So together with Siemens and Siemens as well as I Stanford IT Learning, of course, I thank also my university, the University of Science and Technology for Southern Philippines for uh, letting me talk here and of course, uh, I would also like to uh, give to the impressions of the audience that we are a university that's tackling on science and technology, as well as innovations and entrepreneurship. And of course, I'm going to talk about Shift Tech Marine. So first and foremost, uh, as Jerome mentions, I'm a faculty, I'm an electronics engineer, and I've been teaching for around 20 years or more, particularly in the electronics and communication. And lately I have a venture, which is the Shift Tech Marine. So we are a company actually that powers the blue economy through renewable energy. And we have partnered with Siemens for their solid edge for startups. So let me talk first about the blue economy. So the blue economy is actually everything that happens in the ocean. So the ocean is the most single important ecosystems in the world because uh, it covers uh, around 70% of the planet and everything that happens on land is greatly affected by the seas. No? So beyond fish and ships, our oceans provide us with about 70% of the 70% uh, of climate change regulation, as well as 50% of the air we breathe. No? And among other benefits, also uh, the oceans provide us with food, trade and transportation, tourism, oil and gas, income and jobs, medicine. So it is actually a trillion a trillion dollar industry. And it's a very uh, important ecosystem that actually controls our climate, our lives, and also our economy per se. No? And slide, slide, uh, strikingly, the Philippines is actually a archipelagic nation with around mostly coastal and marine uh, cities nearby. No? So, and that also exemplifies that our economy is highly dependent on the marine space. So Shift Tech Marine is, we are a startup that develops renewable energy systems for the vast requirements of the players of the sea. So we develop renewable energy systems for the blue economy, players like the fisher folks, commercial fishers, marine protected areas, and so on and so forth. And our, our goal here in Shift Tech Marine is we develop renewable energy systems for them. And our initial product are the development of smart battery packs for fishermen and marine floating stations. So the first problem that you've encountered is that in the marine space, there is the inefficiency of lead acid battery for boat lighting. So most of the fisher folks that we have and also commercial fishers rely on this age old car batteries for their lighting and other needs while in the sea. Now, 
uh, we've seen the inefficiencies of this uh, batteries. So that's why we develop power tubes, which is a lightweight, compact, and cost-effective and easy to use battery packs for the marine space, particularly for our ocean going fisher folks and also commercial fishers, as may say. So this is our initial product offering for uh, Shift Tech Marine. No? So we offer this to fisher folks, you are then Swiss cage operators, marine law enforcement, and conservationists. And we have been testing this for quite some time. No? And of course, a good thing is that uh, Shift Tech Marine is uh, uh, recipient of the Solid Edge for Startups uh, program. So they gave us uh, free software as well as training for our personnel on how to develop this uh, um, uh, batteries as well as computer-aided design as well as other uh, uh, PLM products that is uh, given by Siemens. Okay, so that's Shift Tech Marine. But of course, uh, let me give my experience as a meat of my talk is how do we bridge the engineering gap? No? So how do we future-proof engineering education? So let me talk first about me as an educator. So as an educator, um, uh, I have been through the conventional education systems wherein we have the chalk and blackboard or the whiteboard as well as your uh, pen. No? And then uh, in the last few uh, years, I have seen that uh, innovations have sprung up and there must be a need for an educator to go out of the school and try to go to this innovation bandwagon and, of course, develop ourselves. So I have been to a lot of startup events. It's like, for example, this one is in, Ch in Taiwan when I was uh, experiencing my internship there. So I've been to Taitra also. Don't. And also, uh, as an engineer, uh, we should also be adept with our lab work. Okay, We, we should be able to... Uh, continue developing our skills, particularly the use of uh, instruments as well as new technologies. And of course, I've been to the marine space and I've been also to a lot of talks in researches. So for me, you can uh, see me as an educator, as uh, an, an educator wherein I do develop systems and then I do lab works and do research. But most thing, the thing that I love is that uh, um, we joined the innovation bandwagon. So somewhat, uh, we, we try to uh, make our horizons much wider. Now in traditional instructions, okay, so the engineering per se has been through this, where in the teacher will use the blackboard and then uh, explain concepts to our students and let them understand. But for, if you look back to the Bloom's economy, particularly if you are going to use outcome-based education, as an educator, we should also give our instruction so that the students will be able to experience all of this and develop these skills per se. So based on Bloom's economy, the lower level is that students must be able to remember and understand the concepts that we gave. And then furthermore, they should be able to apply the concepts that we teach them and if we, if we develop our instructions correctly, our students should be able to analyze concepts and then evaluate if the concepts that they learn is true or not. So this is involved critical thinking. And the highest level of the Bloom's economy is that our students must be able to create. So in the hierarchy of Bloom's taxonomy, usually traditional concepts in teaching, like the professor, like the blackboard and shock method, Sadly, the professor is the only one who understands. And if you look at this system of teaching, you can only give, get the two lower chair of the Bloom's economy. That means they should be able to remember and only understand. But sadly, understanding is not that delivered in this type of teaching. Because as we say, the professor is the only one who understands. So for those faculty here, how many times did we ask our students when we give an equation or we give a, a long proof of uh, derivations of uh, these concepts? How many did you ask your students that, is there any questions or have you understand a bit? And there's crickets all around. So let's see, the professor usually is the only one who understands what he is talking. And let's say it's a waste of time per se. Now, we cannot push information to students and students need to pull information that they are convinced they need. No? So if we could be able to do this, okay, so 
if we could be able to teach our students that they should be able to develop the love for learning and pull the information and they themselves are convinced, then they we are considered effective and we could deliver the Bloom's economy up to the highest, uh, Bloom's taxonomy up to the highest tier. No? Okay. Now, the requirements for new engineers right now, since we are in the age of digitization, is the industry needs more engineering graduates that must be comfortable with cross-discipline projects, okay? With a range of technology, including digitalization, horizontal organization, along with these deep skill sets, industry wants engineers to be strong problem solvers with aptitude to apply technology to solve problems. So it's a complete package. No? That means uh, engineers, when they graduate from our institutions, companies expect them to be comfortable with these concepts, with the digitization and also horizontal organization. Without horizontal organization, graduates or students or, or employees must be able to act not only in one skill set, but be able to have a certain lots of skills, such as soft skills, ability to analyze, ability to work together, ability to work uh, with the technology at hand, ability how to use the technologies that are quite present in our uh, cyber in, in cyberspace and develop these open source softwares themselves no? and of course graduates are expected really to apply the technology to solve problems now this actually requires a, a change on the education system on how we faculty delivers education no? much of this is due to the lecture-based approach to education we need to reshape the curriculum to focus on project-based learning and we partner with industry thought leaders. So this must be the requirement for the new learning approach. No? And through this, schools should be able to offer long-term realistic projects, reshape the curriculum, and we leverage the software that is available and then enrich learning with technology, develop collaboration skills and prepare for horizontal cross-functional team. And lastly, of course, our students or our institutions should partner with industry for teaching technology to thought leadership because it is actually the industry who is uh, actually the one in the field that will actually absorb our graduate and we should prepare our graduates to do for that no? and the digitization is very quite present right now that means digitization is the process of converting data into electronic format so it goes beyond simply digitizing data so concepts like ar iot in the c4.0 and automation so the students must embrace digitization digitalization much more so for, for us which are the faculty who is going to teach them should be able to embrace digitalization also by heart and one of the key uh, companies that sees the need for the embrace of digitization and leverage of software in enriching learning with technology is Solid Edge. So particularly their PLM software. So they could help us in digitization as well as uh, apply the concepts of uh, digital twins wherein whenever we design systems, we create it in the software, in the computer, and then realize that in real world. And also we have to offer long-term realistic projects for our students. So the concept of design thinking. So design thinking is a very uh, nice concept. It should be by heart to be embraced by all educators as well as our students. So design thinking is simply a loop wherein we define the problem and then we empathize, we go to the community and then we educate. And then once we educate, we prototype the, the solutions that we have, and then we test it. And then we go back again to the community and test. So usually it starts with a problem, a real world problem that engineers and students must be able to solve. And you cannot solve that if you don't go to the community or you don't go to the stakeholders and ask what they want. And then you, you, you educate and then you prototype and it's a cyclic method. No? So design thing is actually the heart of engineering design process. No? And we off, by doing so, if we offer long-term projects to our students, um, design thinking will give us a product of a service that is both de desirable, viable, and feasible. So it's the cross-section of all of these three concepts. No? And that is what we call innovation.
Now, this the problem with uh, the concept that uh, if you don't use design thinking, is this is a very good example. No? So, if you have heard a lot of times right now that uh, digitization of agriculture is a must. Okay. They say that uh, we use IoT, we did use digitization, we use the net in order to perform precision agriculture and we digitize our farmlands. And it's a, quite a need. And what is what being done abroad? No? But if you don't you do the design thinking concepts, you just design something like, for example, a web app or a mobile for our farmers. Do you know that majority of the farmlands don't have electricity access and internet coverage? And majority of the farmers don't know how to use smartphone, nor does they own one. So we now go back to the concept that if you design something, make sure that that design or that product should be utilized by your stakeholder or by your user. There's no use designing something that nobody wants or selling something that nobody wants. And this is a good example that I always give. So for we for the fun. So when projects are created without design thinking, you have seen a lot of this. How many uh, waiting sheds do we have all over the Philippines? Or how many uh, overpass that we have? And how many welcome to the bars, for example, how many welcome markers we have? So most of these are actually, although they serve a purpose, but usually in terms of prioritization and also the need, sometimes they are not useful and there are much more projects that should be done. So it's quite sad that some of our government projects are not based on design thinking and actually there's no engineering involved. So also we should partner with industry for technology thought leadership. So this is the lifelong industry academic partnership paradigm. No? So we're in university researchers and company professionals should work together to manage a project. But you are actually merging two domains, the university domain and the company domain, which are thinking quite different or wired quite different. So the caveat in the academic industry partnership is that uh, in the academy, we are two academic and idealists. So the, the concept of time element is usually not present. But for the industry, they are more on business and profit oriented. Thus, time and money is of the essence. So sometimes when we partner with them, we are operating with two different paradigms. No? So the academy cannot adjust to the business and profit centric system, while the industry cannot wait for the idealism of the academy. So usually that's the problem there. And how do we mitigate this too, so that the academy can experience what the industry wants and the industry can also realize the potential of the academy. So actually there's hope in there. And we now have the innovation per se, wherein startups, entrepreneurs are being developed. So we, uh, sorry. let me see the chat. Okay, so I think so. So we're going to develop uh, the innovation system wherein uh, we are now in a field wherein most of the competitions our students are joining are actually startups and uh, different competitions. No? And how do we do all of this in one go? So that means reshape the curriculum or for long-term projects, all of this. So my take is that we cannot teach what we don't know. No? So for me, I go to the different, uh, uh, competitions, I do the different uh, forests like DevCon, PyCon, and we should, teachers should be able to practice what should be able to teach, and you cannot teach what you don't know. Okay, so as a start, I developed Lyser, which is a robot per se, and also in 2017, I've been introduced to the marine space, and I've developed robots at sea, but secondly, I love robots, they are moving, but only to find out that nobody really wants a moving robot in the actual application. So is there a need for real applications? And then I've come across illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing with the problem of our fishery. And from that, the problem with fishery, so we have, I have uh, developed systems, uh, my expertise in robotics and embedded systems, and create engineering uh, solutions to real world problems. So we developed these various technologies. No? So we have the Pirate Fish Seamate. This is a vessel monitoring system where our seamans can be tracked now. 
And also, of course, I said the Shift Tech Marine has uh, battery packs for uh, seaman, for, for the fisher folks, simply because of the design thinking that we did. We go to the community and we found out the problems in batteries. And of course, I've been to a lot of uh, hackathon competitions. So I am a faculty who joined a lot of competitions. And the experience is there, which is you cannot get in your university. So you need to go out. So we developed Pirate Fish Net. So this is a network of smart buoys with sound sensors that could detect intrusion in marine protected areas. And we have a lot of designs. And we thank Siemens also because, uh, because of Siemens, we'll be able to develop the design in the software and then uh, translate that into real world physical systems. So we leverage now the use of technology in developing this system. So in 2019, we won the first place in Hakaton Cebu. And in 2020, also we won the Karagaton as a champion. And based on the learnings of this, I have applied this to my students. And I'm now much more equipped to design and develop and teach students how to do the process of design thinking and all the other concepts. So I have uh, developed teams in our university who are actual finalists in the National Innovation Olympics, so the Locus Chlorophyll Meter and BASIPS. So the learnings that I have on the industry, on my uh, uh, undertaking outside of the university, I've taught that to the students. And then I now teach engineering in, way, in ways wherein I require them projects so that they can have a sort of a industry experience. And this is the only way wherein we could bind the industry academe link, no? wherein we can exercise both of that. And there's a series of urgency required. No? So by teaching innovation concepts to students, we let them join innovation competitions so they can develop effective life real life learnings in engineering, and they can be calculated in their minds through this exercise, we can achieve the following. So by letting students join innovation competitions, they take engineering by heart, and they take engineering education as sort of an exercise, as a top professional in we apply software and technology. And by doing this exercise, we could offer the following, we offer them long-term realistic projects, we could be able to reshape the curriculum based on innovation. We could leverage software, enrich learning with technology and develop collaboration skills, prepare for horizontal cross-functional teams and partner with industry for technology through leadership. So number six is a very good important thing because we prepare them to be horizontal, not vertical. So our industry is usually much more on the concept of top-down learning, but what we have leverage, we could leverage now we're in most of the uh, practitioner or students graduate jobs should be able to be a jack of all trades. Okay, there's a need for that so that they can collaborate and work together with other parts of the team in the industry. So in the conclusion, we can develop students that are in demand, foster soft skills, use technology to support learning, and partner with industry thought leaders and Educators and students must go out of the building. It's, there's a need for us, not just only students, but for us faculty also. And lastly, faculty could learn from their students. It's not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. So for the last frontier, so Shift Tech Marine, so this, there's a lot of problem in the space. And we thank you for listening. And actually, if you are interested with Shift Tech Marine, you can contact us to our email as well as for our uh, uh, website, which is www.shifttechmarine.com. So we are committed to developing smart technologies for the sustainable use of our marine resources. And me as a faculty, so I hope I have given enough justice to my talk. The last takeaway is that we as faculty should be able to go out of the rooms experience the industry, experience innovation, so that we'll be able to be better equip and teach our students various concepts that we can learn outside from the university. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Engineer Pasqua. So I will still be uh, hearing you later no, on our uh, Q&A. So but, uh, again, we would like to say thank you for that very interesting talk. And I am sure uh, you were able to inspire our students and teachers to be technopreneur just like you and be able to leverage on using the 
digital technologies. No? And of course, design thinking. So be able to solve problems in our society. So I hope, uh, please do uh, type in your questions if you have really something that uh, you would want to ask uh, Prof. Pasqua later. But for now, let's move forward to another interesting talk. So our next speaker is a registered mechanical engineer. So he also used to teach no, in engineering science sciences at Mindanao State University, Ligan Institute of Technology. So he is our applications engineer. So please, everyone, let us all welcome engineer Fer Michael Gonzalez. Hello. Uh, yeah, can you see my screen already, Sir Jerome? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Yeah. So, um, welcome to my presentation, Bridging um, Solid Edge, Bridging Academia to Industry 4.0. Yeah. So, by the way, I am engineer for Michael Gonzalez. I am the applications engineer here at CIM Technologies. Okay, I am also a registered mechanical engineer, and as uh, Sir Jerome has mentioned uh, earlier, that I also had an experience with uh, teaching in the university level. And by the way, I am a professional certificate holder of Solid Edge as well. So there you go. So let's discuss. Yeah, thank you. Welcome everyone, and good morning. So we will be discussing a couple of uh, topics pertaining to uh, trends. Okay, we'll be discussing the demand, the requirement there is in the industry, and then the Siemens solution that is available for us as educators, and then the academic resources, and as well as the Solid Edge user group. Now, if we look at history, it seems that um, there is always another disaster or crisis around the corner that uh, companies need to deal with. So it can be competitors catching up, probably uh, could be trade barriers that uh, implode markets, impact from wars or natural disasters, or even right now, it is quite relatable that we are um, dealing with the pandemic as well. So it's quite a tough challenge for us as um, educators as well. Okay, uh, just to give you an example, when the oxygen tank exploded on Apollo 13, the NASA ground controllers had to rewrite procedures to get the crew home. So they actually leveraged their simulator to test the procedures before passing back to the crew. So imagine the difference they'd have 50 years later, okay, with a digital twin for simulations. Another example is VinFast. They are, uh, are set out to write the history of the first domestic car in Vietnam. So Siemens helped them stand up an automotive uh, factory in 21 months. Now, by becoming a digital enterprise. Then, actually, COVID hit. Now, in the time of need, they wanted to manufacture 55,000 ventilators per month to help people affected by the virus. Now, moving from autom uh, automobiles to ventilators is much easier said than done. They actually licensed Medtronic design for ventilator and then came to Siemens to build the digital twin for manufacturing in just over three weeks. So imagine three weeks of uh, researching ventilators and starting from scratch. VinFast engineers succeeded in improving and mastering ventilator manufacturing technology. Indeed, times of crisis have historically driven innovation. Now, to further illustrate the need to advance innovation in the industry, are you familiar with uh, the Moore's Law? So basically, Moore's Law is the observation of the number of transistors on integrated circuits. So it was observed that the number of transistors on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years. So this aspect of technological progress is important as the capabilities of many digital electronic devices are strongly linked to the Moore's law. 
So technological developments in many respects are growing exponentially. Now, as the fourth industrial uh, revolution continually unfolds, companies are harnessing new and emerging technologies to reach higher levels of efficiency, expand to new markets, and compete for the attention of global consumer base composed increasingly of digital natives. So uh, yet in order to harness the transformative potential of what we call as Industry 4.0, business leaders must formulate a comprehensive workforce uh, strategy able to meet the challenges of this new era of accelerating change and innovation. Now, technological change and shifts in job roles and occupational structures are transforming the demand for skills at a faster rate okay, than ever before. 38% of businesses surveyed expect to extend their workforce to new productivity enhancing roles and more than a quarter expect automation to lead to the creation of new roles in their own enterprise. The World Economic Forum forecasted 133 million additional new jobs from 2018 to 2022 that are more adapted to the new division of labor between humans, machines, and even algorithms. So if current growth trends hold, these emerging professions will account for more than 6 million new jobs over the next year. The highest rate of growth within high volume jobs include AI and machine learning specialists. We have medical transcriptionists, even data scientists, customer success specialists, and full stack engineers. These specialized roles involve digital tools and a continuous development of skills because of the technological advancement. Now, in fact, by 2022, the skills required to perform most jobs will have shifted significantly by 42%. Now, due to this trend and increasing demand, the skills that we might be equipping our future workforce might be out of date or has it become irrelevant in this day and age. So what can we do and where should we focus, right? We commissioned industry analyst CIM data to interview university and college leaders to level set the state of academia. Okay, they found the convergence of emerging technologies and an aging workforce drive, the need for a talent pipeline that understands the digital product lifecycle management. And their research noted the following. So first, a significant gap in education versus the industry expectations as what have um, Professor Pasqua had mentioned uh, in his presentation. A second, students need more cross-disciplinary thinking to support today's businesses. Next, everyone across a company, not just in engineering and manufacturing, needs an increased level of digital literacy, be it in the department of marketing, we have for purchasing, probably in support, project, management or even in costing. And last and research of cutting edge technologies like additive manufacturing, data analytics, systems engineering. We also commissioned research by Tech Clarity from more than 200 manufacturers to understand the state of engineering. So basically on the other side, as it applies to skills and employability. And the findings indicate that 69% anticipate engineering growth for uh, over the next five to 10 years. Engineering departments uh, top heavy with experience 27%, by 27%, okay? 98% note the negative business impacts if it can't find and hire the right engineers, okay? The top most important skills are the following, okay? Based on the tech clarity findings, uh, skills such as product costing, manufacturability, project management, problem solving, and industry specifics. 75% want students to be able to apply technology to solve problems, not just what we call as picks and clicks, so basically just knowing the software. Okay. The industry also wants practical experience through real world projects, top desired experience in new hires as well. And lastly, companies would like to see industry involved in 18% of curriculum to help reduce skills gap. Now, the world that new graduates are entering is full of complexity. 
okay, with emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, product development, and integration of probably electrical engineering systems as well, mechanical, CAD embedded simulation, and concepts like design for manufacture. Then we have complexity of integrating design, manufacturing, and utilization, or even deployment. Now, neither of these are just what we call as inconveniences. They manifest themselves in ways that can be easily measured by industry, such as lead times, cost of inventory, cost of uh, quality, rework, or all costs deflecting from research and development and innovation. Now, uh, how do we prepare students to handle all this complexity and turn it into a competitive advantage? Now, in Siemens' view, graduates must be able to address three, three key business imperatives. Knowledge, uh, first, knowledge and skill to use a comprehensive digital twin across entire product and production life cycle. Next, trained in cross-disciplinary systems, thinking to harness the power of the complexity before them. They, will, uh, they should be able to work collaboratively across ecosystem of functions and partners to recognize emerging problems and build innovative solutions. Now, with all these challenges continually rising, what can we do and where should we focus? Now, we're focused on helping academia evolve uh, engineering education with not only technology, but also curriculum and training in emerging areas. Solid Edge is one of the Siemens products that enable the workforce of tomorrow and enable digital transformation in academic institutions like it does in our commercial customers. Giving students and educators the right tools to address those key industry imperatives I've mentioned earlier. Okay, Cross product capabilities include the complete portfolio working together. For example, ECAD working with the um, MCAD or the mechanical CAD. Validating digital twin with simulation tools and more. Using digital twin to create technical documentation and more. Okay, With Siemens proprietary synchronous technology, the engineering graduates are able to cope up with the increase in demand for highly sophisticated designs for classwork, research and development, and more. Now, let's get a quick overview of the Solid Edge portfolio. So let's start with the 2D drafting. Okay, now Precise drawings are easily made as it is driven by the 3D design. We can also add annotation objects such as dimension, callouts, Okay, and can be easily placed with tools such as smart dimension. We have retrieve dimensions, um, feature callouts. Okay, you can also quickly add views for your model such as broken out, broken sec, uh, broken section or auxiliary view with just a couple of clicks, and it uses a standard template as well. Okay, there you go. Now the next thing is uh, through synchronous technology, which is exclusive for Siemens. Users can quickly create and revise their 3D models for their part design. Now, combining the parametric and direct modeling design, design flexibility is significantly improved. With convergent modeling, meshed models can be manipulated for 3D printing preparation, quick uh, design revisions, and more. The mechanical design capability of Solid Edge also includes we have surface design generative design, and PNID, okay? or what we call as process and instrumentation design. In the area of sheet metal design, Solid Edge has the set of tools and commands for the quick creation for your design from tabs. We have flanges, even um, deformation features for dimples, drawn cutout. Okay? You can also add break corners and more. For manufacturing purposes, the user can create the flat pattern of their designs as quickly. And also, Solid Edge can extract data such as hole and bend table according to the sheet metal gauge the user applies in the design. So they don't have to manually enter or create the table for the hole and bend table. Okay, Solid Edge extracts the data for the user. Now, in Solid Edge 2021, subdivision modeling was actually introduced for highly complex designs. 
that were um, traditionally restricted with um, using surfaces. Okay. With subdivision modeling, you start with a basic mesh and then use a what we call as a polygonal control cage to create your desired shape as what you are already seeing in your screens right now. Now, uh, beyond that, we have photo rendering and animations can be done through Keyshot. Okay, it is uh, a software along with our software. Now, under assembly modeling of solid edge, users can easily manipulate geometry at assembly level, ensuring proper fit of components. We can also use other components as the reference as well to create a proper fit of our part designs as well. Also, the range of motion of components can be checked relative to the added assembly. We can also check interferences. Now, other assembly modeling capabilities of solid edge are uh, frame design, we have welded structures, large assembly for uh, probably five to 10,000 uh, component designs or even more. Okay. We have standard parts library for fasteners, engineering refer references to create, um, for example, camshafts, um, spur gear designs. Okay. Um, yes. And then the next solution under the solid edge portfolio is the model based definition. It provides a complete digital characterization of parts and assemblies using 3D design data. Annotation of 3D parts provides clear manufacturing communication. In Solid Edge, dynamic section tool can quickly section views to expose the important internal parts and details. Product manufacturing information or PMI can be added in the 3D model to ensure effective coordination with downstream workflows, especially if attached to templates such as 3D PDF. Okay, so you can create your brochures, your manuals, any documentation that is necessary to have an efficient coordination with downstream departments. The solid edge modular plant design is an integral part of the solid edge portfolio and comprises of software modules that enables users to create 2D processes and instrumentation diagrams for uh, process plant designs. You can also create 3D CAD models of process plant, including piping, flanges, valves, and associated structures and equipment, and automatically create isogen isometric drawings of piping as necessary. The solid edge electrical design comprises of four, four software solutions such as electrical routing, we have wiring design, harness design, and PCB design. Electrical routing enables users for fast creation of wire routing, position connectors, wire bundles, and more around 3D electromechanical assemblies. Wiring design offers intuitive electrical circuit design built-in intelligent libraries and analysis and validation highlight errors. Okay, another um, software solution is the harness design that enables users to create graphical layout of harness and form board designs and automatic harness BOMs and cutting list. Now, did I mention that you can connect both mechanical and electrical through what we call as connected mode? Solid Edge ECAD and MCAD collaboration offers just that. Now, validation of the user's product performance is made easy with Solid Edge simulation tools. For structural and flow, intuitive wizards enable users to quickly set up the simulation analysis. Model preparation can be easily done through Solid Edge synchronous technology. Automatic and manual meshing is also available. It uses FIMAP and NASTRAN solver. Furthermore, the post processing tools such as contour plats, um, animation or even generation of reports are made avail available for presentation or results analysis. Solid Edge Manufacturing offers solutions for subtractive and additive. Solid Edge Cam Pro has tools for 2.5, 3, and 5 axis milling and turning. We have tool path visualization. 3D dynamic simulation shows 
tool uh, motion and concurrent material removal and PostHub, which is an online library of post processors. Solid Edge Cam Pro supports G-code based simulation. Solid Edge also offers quick model preparation for the additive manufacturing, such as creating physical threads, void removal, and more. Now, creating brochures, product manuals, maintenance procedures, or quality control instructions, or just a few of the outputs that can be generated using Solid Edge publications. This allows users to create template-based single or multi-page technical uh, illustrations as necessary. Now, using existing Solid Edge 3D geometry, the user can import the associated PMI, configurations, and model views. The users can add imagery, text, tables, and other objects. Now we have Solid Edge Data Management. It offers flexibility to improve coordination and collaboration across the enterprise or your institution. Solid Edge Cloud Collaboration enables users to share files such as Solid Edge files, uh, be it Office files, and more. Also, users can add markups to point out areas of interest with other project members. Okay, the embedded data management of Solid Edge enables users to define vault. Um, to benefit in the index-based search or change status of files accordingly, okay, such as the files, um, if, if the files are under review, files are available or obsolete, or even released for manufacturing. You can also define uniqueness by setting naming rules or even file status as well. Siemens is committed to empowering the next generation of digital talent through a global strategic initiative. Now, you have already seen the capability of the comprehensive um, solid edge portfolio, okay, that offers um, engineering solutions. Now, indeed, solid edge is the right tool for your digital transformation. Now, moving one step further, Siemens also offers relevant resources and assets to improve engineering across all disciplines. This would then enable academic institutions to close the skills gap. Best in class curriculum developed by renowned faculty with technical expertise from Siemens, subject matter experts improves cross disciplinary theory and as well as application. There is an available curriculum for the educators to use according to the academic level. Okay, the curriculum details engineering approach in design, manufacturing, and more, and leveraging the use of solid edge portfolio to complement the learning experience of the students. No cost, comprehensive self-paced online training for students and faculty provide tool-based learning to expand stu uh, students' knowledge and to allow instructors to make the most of classroom time. So from learning the basics of sol uh, using Solid Edge to knowing specific design areas such as sheet metal design, surface modeling, or wire harness design, this set of resources are there for the taking. Okay, just to familiarize yourselves with the different engineering solutions found in the Solid Edge portfolio. Now, we also have learning paths that provide comprehensive set of lessons with knowledge-based instructions, examples, and exercises that cover key areas of Solid Edge, such as generative design, assembly design, or even to have a quick start with Solid Edge. Not only you can equip yourself with the skills using Solid Edge, once finished, you can actually earn badges as proof of completion. There are also courses available in other education sites that you might be uh, quite keen to search, such as Udemy. Okay, students and or educators can find relevant courses. Um, there are actually um, schools that have um, courses available on these websites that leverage also Solid Edge in their teaching. Okay. 
So uh, just like to emphasize the uh, 3D CAD fundamentals by John Devitry, who is a certified Siemens instructor. So you'll just have a quick um, sort of tutorial on how to use Solid Edge. Okay. Now to show your level of proficiency with using Solid Edge, certification exams are available as well. So leverage as you seek uh, probably internships, postgraduate employment, or even let's say tutoring gigs. You can take these certifications independently or as part of your curriculum. And by the way, taking the associate level certification, which is usually intended for students and teachers, is for free. So you can take them for free. Now, if you are convinced about using Solid Edge or perhaps somehow curious, you can download and install the software in the website. It's made available for students and teachers. So the Solid Edge uh, portfolio available for you guys uh, in the academic institutions are uh, somehow has the capability of a premium package of Solid Edge. So this is the package that is usually used by the commercial customers as well. But if you want to avail the other solutions inside the Solid Edge portfolio, such as flow simulation, we have CAM, we have for PNID, Solid Edge academic bundle is right for you. Okay, um, if you're quite interested, you can contact us to have a more detailed discussion pertaining to this solid academic bundle and drum up your engineering education. Uh, in part, moving system, the solid edge also plays a vital Okay, this is Hello guys, sorry for that one. So let me share my screen again. Thank you, Sir Jerome. Just a crisis. For you guys, okay. This is a manifestation of okay. Yeah, uh, I think you can already see my screen. Good, good. Can you confirm, um, Sir Jerome? Yes, yes, uh, I can. Good, okay, yeah. So that's crisis for you, as I've mentioned earlier, guys, okay? All right. So let me continue. Thank you for your patience, okay? Now, to continue, this ecosystem allows a good exchange of design ideas, be it for the academe and industry as well. Now, that's bridging, okay? So let me continue. So, uh, by the way, so if you're interested in joining the Solid Edge user group, you can actually visit um, you can visit the page and join. Join the community. Now Siemens is committed to empowering the next generation of digital talent through a global strategic initiative. So our global academic partner program provides industrial strength software covering the entire value chain of improved engineering across all disciplines. We have best-in-class curriculum developed by renowned faculty with technical expertise from Siemens. We have no-cost comprehensive self-paced online training for students and faculty that provides tool-based learning to expand students' knowledge. We all, uh, Also, Siemens actually sponsors real-world competitions that provide experience in problem-solving, teamwork, and project management. Now, today, the academic partner ecosystem empowers more than one million future engineers and leaders at more than 3,000 academic institutions globally to provide a strong pipeline of talent to more than 140,000 commercial customers. So uh, if you want to empower the workforce of tomorrow by leveraging the tools and assets that I have mentioned regarding Solid Edge, you can approach our Stanford IT Learning. 
especially if you are considering an academic partnership with Siemens. Okay, we could also offer training for the faculty, technical support, exclusive events, certifications, just to name a few, to help your young talents for Industry 4.0. So let us find out some um, successful stories of some Siemens academic partners, both in local and in international. Okay, so the first example is the PUP Higers. Um, they actually joined the Shell Echo Marathon. They approached us regarding some matters for um, their challenges, such as for mechanical design and in surfacing to ensure aerodynamic uh, body of their um, vehicle prototype. Okay, and the results when they integrated solid edge in their um, process in creating their efficient um, prototype vehicle. They actually pass technical requirements and standards set out by the compet uh, competition's technical and safety inspectors. And they were able to manufacture the prototype with satisfactory performance, both structurally and aerodynamically. Next is the University of Tokyo Robotech. Okay? Their challenges are the following, to develop a reliable robot that performs according to specifications. They want to improve design team efficiency and adjust to diverse courses and required tasks. Now, they, when they integrated Solid Edge in their academic institution, the results are the following. They were able to create a highly reliable robot in a short span of time. Performance issues identified early in the development process as well. Okay, and students gained high proficiency using a team-centered design process. Now, another example is the Coastal KZN College. Okay, the challenges are the following. Improve the skill levels of engineering students and of the greater society throughout South Africa. They want also to support the development of tooling and manufacturing industry locally. Now, the results, when they use Solid Edge in their curriculum, Okay, they have produced um, proficient students that can address the challenges for the tooling and manufacturing industry in South Africa. Okay, they also had a center of training and excellence established specifically for that sector as well, and established pathway for increased educational opportunities and funding. Now, this is just a snapshot of more than 3,000 schools worldwide that uses Siemens PLM software for in-class instruction. To date, over 1 million students have been exposed to our technology through various academic initiatives. Now, it could be your school, your organization, or your university to join this academic community that uses Solid Edge and produce highly com com competent engineering graduates ready to take digital transformation uh, in the engineering industry. The growing ecosystem of makers, academic institutions, incubators, and small and medium enterprises has allowed effective collaboration and quick feedback system to allow each organization to fully meet the needs of tomorrow. The digitalization has created avoid to be filled by skilled and knowledgeable workforce. We have seen how technology evolves every year and it is the duty of every educator to equip the workforce of tomorrow, the right tools for them to comply to the demand. With the best in class solid edge, along with the Siemens academic resources and other assets, this would open doors and opportunities. Siemens academic program with solid edge bridge academia to industry 4.0. And that's it. Thank you everyone for listening. And thank you for the questions that you have sent in. And I would like to turn the screen to Sir Jerome. Sir Jerome, take it away. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Fur, for uh, enlightening us about the industry trends and a very comprehensive how Solid Edge portfolio you know, can be really an innovative tool uh, in turning uh, your ideas uh, into a reality. So I would like just to uh, perhaps uh, acknowledge some of the beautiful comments no, from the chat box.
So he, there's a comment. I like the portion of design thinking talks. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so there's also another uh, compliment. Great presentation. Lots of useful insights. Thank you, Engineer Pasqua. Okay. So let us, uh, yeah, let us invite uh, our distinguished speakers, Engineer Pasqua and Engineer per Gonzalez, for our question and answer portion. So uh, let me. Our, the first question, I know that. Uh, there are already some answers, no? But uh, let for those who are not, uh, you know, in an audio mode, let us. Uh, so for for Prof Pasqua, okay. Yeah. So uh, let me read this question. So as a startup business in product design and manufacturing, uh, what are the key challenges that you face, and which the government? should address now and into the next three years to help other startups make their journey easier? It's a very good question. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that good question. So actually, it's a challenging question to answer, per se. <laughs> um, I could tackle that based on my paradigm as coming from academe. So when you develop startups, you usually if you started from the usual, if you uh, usual business, and then you develop uh, some projects of software, uh, product and services as a startup, then usually uh, the adjustments is really not that great compared to if you are coming from the academe, for me, per se. Uh, because as I said in the talk that I have, uh, the academe is quite wired quite differently compared to what's in the engineering industry per se. No? So for, uh, that's the first challenge that I have is how to rewire my, my, my attitude and my um, way of life in order to meet the demands of uh, creating a startups by yourselves. And actually startups is really a hard thing to do. And you know, uh, it's a known fact that only a few survive, but if you persist, then the rewards are quite great. You know? And for the challenges that uh, we've encountered, as I said, uh, uh, it should be the shift of the attitudes and the shift of the way of life for me. And I think the government has already been quite supportive you know, for, for those budding startups to go. As for the challenges, I think... Um, the government has already done something and the government is doing it right now that they see they realize the realize the importance of creating innovations, creating uh, startups and creating new companies. Uh, they also uh, supported our <laughs> universities to offer entrepreneurships and to offer uh, innovation to be integrated in their, their, their classrooms. So yun na lang, ang kulang na lang is actually the embrace and the paradigm shifts of those faculties to really give into this program. And the government is quite supportive and they have realized that through the DOST, DTI, uh, the ICT, and also there are a lot of groups online that are into it. And for those who are, it's not just the government that, uh, provides a support no there are a lot of institutions international institutions notably is the UNDP or young UN particularly if you geared towards the solving the sustainable development goals uh, lots of fundings lots of trainings lots of development that you can tap in so as you can see uh, hindi na siya ganun kahirap to jump start and to get support no there are a lot of institutions, and the government per se is doing also a lot, no. And uh, na ano, so I think relatively there's no should be no challenge for anyone. Yun na lang is for ourselves to if you're budding startups is how to leverage and how to uh, take advantage of all of these programs and which are already being offered. And the good thing is because of pandemic. Mas madali siya actually ngayon to get grants and to get, because applications are everywhere. When you try to apply to programs and grants, uh, Google form na lang, enter, and then you will be notified right away compared to the pre-pandemic. So mas mahirap pre-pandemic to go to get these uh, innovation grants and partnerships. 
okay? Including sa Siemens and CIM Technologies. No? Mas madali na actually to go into partnerships because I think the due to the pandemic, the world has adjusted and na, parang na force to go into digitalization. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, for sharing your experience, Prof. But they can also uh, approach you if, say, for example, they I can uh, uh, can you mentor me? Can you uh, perhaps uh, consult us? <laughs> do you also do that, Buff, Prof? Yeah, sure, uh, for, sure. For budding startups. Yep. Okay. So thank, thanks a lot, uh, Prof. Pasqua. So there's an uh, another question for uh, perhaps for Engineer Fur, no? So uh, let me yeah. read this question. So for students uh, with little to no experience in using design tools mm -hmm. such as uh, Solid Edge, how can they adapt to this type of technology more effectively? Yeah. yeah uh, okay. Um, one of the highlights in my presentation, uh, yeah. So sorry, thank you for that question, Sir Jerome. Um, one of the highlights that I've mentioned in my presentation is basically all the resources that is available. Um, yeah, so there are actually learning paths that they can leverage um, in trying to learn these digital tools, such as what I mentioned earlier, the Solid Edge. Okay. Um, if um, also it is basically uh, we're trying to encourage. The academic institutions as well to have an approach um, like what uh, Professor Pasqua has mentioned in his presentation with design thinking. Um, actually, I, I joined um, uh, some sort of a training under Siemens with in terms of Solid Edge or Siemens Engineering Design. So they're trying to encourage academic institutions to have a, uh, an approach in terms of determining problems that we can actually give solution through the use of digital tools such as Solid Edge. So um, some of the attendees of this training, uh, this 40-hour training is um, also um, educators abroad. They are usually in, uh, associated with probably high school on their level because uh, they are coming from US. Okay, so They are trying to integrate this kind of learning process with the, their high school students as well using digital tools with solid edge and trying to you know encourage students to go uh, out of the classroom discuss with um, some industries or some institutions and probably give a solution uh, fitting to their problem okay. i hope i did answer the question well thank thanks sir Jerome. thanks a lot uh, engineer for so for our uh, next question uh, for Prof, so we've already read this. So let me check. Huh? So there's a question hmm. here, given the new normal. So ah. how can universities and students continue to effectively develop design thinking? Very uh, popular huh? during these uh, unprecedented times. <laughs> ano okay. ba yung design thinking, Prof? <laughs> so basically, uh, for those who are not familiar with design thinking, so it's actually not just per se design thinking. It's uh, actually it has other names also. No, uh, the very natural of the design thing is simply uh, that means we solve a problem that the community or everybody wants. So that's the that's what it is all about. No? So don't waste your time creating solutions or creating solving uh, engineering or creating products using your engineering skills only later to find out that nobody wants it or it's not useful you know? um, uh, let me just give you an experience I have uh, when I talked I went to one national organization of inventors I think that was in 2017 no? so it's a national organization and there's this these old guys who are quite good scientists per se and they say they keep on babbling that we have created a lot of uh, products and results and and actually uh, commercial products based on our research and how come nobody is investing or how come nobody is buying it so plainly the answer is in the first place have you ever asked the people the common people that 
they do need your technology. Do they need your technology? If they don't need your technology, if there's no use for it, then don't design it. Don't waste your time. So what I'm saying is that uh, when we do lifelong project, as a, 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 if we teach engineering, it should be it should be project based and it should be considered a lifelong, a long term project, not just for one subject, but somehow it's a direction that steers towards maybe that will affect the students. And from the start, when you do that, you should be able to look at the community and see problems in the real world and then base your problems. And from that problem, then you create your designs, you create your project to come up with a product or a service that will be able to solve that. Now, for the answer of in the new normal, uh, of course, we are all hampered to be at home. And uh, design thinking, per se, actually requires for you to go out to the community and uh, ask for what they have. But I think uh, just like in any aspects, not just only engineering, at all aspects of life, I think uh, we all have adjusted to the new normal, the new way of life. And uh, we use, uh, actually, uh, so we are, there's one thing that we should be thankful also with the pandemic because it actually fast track the digitalization and the adoption of the web no? <laughs> in, in doing this. So, uh, yeah, for say, uh, you, there's limitation on going out. But if you look at the other side of the coin, uh, it's, there are a lot of other means like Google Forms. No? Um, mm. Yeah, wherein you can do your validation. You can do... Okay, and then what's good is that if you cannot go to the community or to the, the stakeholders themselves, what you have to do is connect virtually with a champion in the community. So, for example, for us fishermen, we do, if we can't go to the fisher folks, then we use Facebook and chat with the fisher folks, mm -hmm. you know, chat with the uh, organizations. And that's and the good thing right now is that uh, I think everyone has been introduced to this technology. That it's quite easier now yes. to talk with experts, to talk with those champions in the community. So actually, the effect of pandemic in the design thinking process is quite minimal simply because all you have to do is go to the paradigm shift use what is now being done which is now being common so google forms no if you need surveys google form is there so if you need to talk with the community then befriend a champion in the community so what is important is you still do what is the most important thing actually per se in design thinking is that the ideation the empathy we're in you first try to find the problem that is quite relevant and then go from there. So in a nutshell, I think uh, the effect is quite minimal per se because it just changed mode kumbaga, from physical to <laughs> virtual. Na? Yeah. But uh, Prof, for the Fisher folks, are, they a, are you able to connect them at the sea? Do they have... Uh, internet connection so they yeah no no so they say the fisher folks is considered we virtually consider them no so it's it's actually a, a notion for us to really generalize that they are not that techy yeah for the fisherman <clears throat> it might be but this fisherman have their wives and they have their children and the children are actually digital natives it's safe to say that uh, regardless of your background now children or the gener the new generations are actually digital natives they can leverage the use of facebook and so on so uh when we try to wo work with fishermen and then we introduce concepts like how about using uh, a website or something so usually they say that uh, talk to my children uh, talk to my housewife <laughs> so <laughs> and uh the wife me themselves so most of the why and the business model usually when we go to fisherman communities is that the husband does the fishing and it is the wife who does the marketing and wives know the lever we are wives are now leveraging the use of facebook marketing per se in their 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 their, their method of marketing their products so as i said um uh, it's just a matter of adjusting no? and Thanks to the pandemic, the need for embracing digital technology has been a must, not just a, 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 a 
not just a require a privilege or no privilege, but it's actually a requirement right now. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Prof. So in the future, folk, they are still doing team collaboration, of which you are espousing the, the family. So uh, let's uh, move on to our next question for uh, Engineer Per. So it's okay. just this is just a very short ano lang po, uh, okay. question. So what separates uh, Solid Edge from other CAD tools? Okay, yeah. Thanks, Sir Jerome, for that question. So um, what separates Solid Edge from other CAD tools is the technology that they are using uh, for the design. Um, so actually, synchronous technology is uh, exclusive only for Siemens. So the tool software that is uh, using the synchronous technology is NX and Solid Edge because they are the softwares developed by Siemens. Okay, so just to give you uh, a brief discussion of what synchronous technology is, probably you might be thinking that it is some uh, buzzword that we are using, but synchronous technology basically says that we could actually leverage the advantages offered in direct modeling and as well as with history-based modeling softwares. So that's why it's usually called as synchronous technology because we can um, actually simultaneously use both environments in our designing needs. So if you're still uh, quite hesitant because you are quite adept in using ordered modeling softwares, okay, and probably thinking or, um, probably quite concerned in transferring to Solid Edge. Um, Solid Edge still offers that kind of technology, the ordered environment. And um, maybe you are curious uh, before about direct modeling. Also, uh, Solid Edge also offers that kind of um, design flexibility. So, yeah. Thank you, uh, Engineer Fer. So in other words, you're saying that it's easier and faster to uh, create models yeah solid. if they leverage secret yeah. technology i think they could really appreciate especially from the feedback that we are getting from our um what do you call this customers or clients in a commercial space so what they have found that, that creating revisions or even um, conceptualizing designs in the early stages of um, design process uh, synchronous technology actually helped them significantly to have uh, quick um, production uh, lead times. Um, they were able to quickly pivot, especially their customers or target market. So yeah, so, so, so uh, synchronous technology offers just that inside Solid Edge. Okay, thank you very much. And in actually this question is for Sir uh, Engineer Pasqua, but there's a re relation to that question. You know? So how was a Solid Edge able to help out in uh, Shift Tech Marine's product oh. design and development? Okay, so uh, actually, <laughs> Engineer Fair can also expound no? uh, uh, later on this. Okay. But for the experience with Shift Tech Marine, so actually, uh, even starting out in Lyser Robotics that time in 2015, I think, so I have used the academic license from Siemens to develop the robots. And from that experience, I was able to present my work more professionally rather than do it in a sketch. No? And um, also from the optimization, wherein you design the product in Solid Edge. And then from there, you optimize. And for example, uh, when you place a very good example is when you place uh, holes in, for example, nuts and bolts. You have to fasten to objects, and you need bo uh, holes for nuts and bolts. So for the manual process, it's quite uh, <laughs> difficult to do that. No? Uh, of course, you can do that using ruler and triangle T squares, but the precision is really not there compared to if you design it in a CAD software and then print it, for example, in if you don't have a 3D printer, print it in a um, paper or a seeker paper, then paste it to a plywood or a metal, and then you try to use manual methods. So it, but if you drill, then more precision is involved rather than 
use the manual method. So that's the leverage that we do. That means uh, in the design concepts, uh, when you have a product, then you have the specifications. And from that specifications, you use the software to uh, do uh, as a, a real world model. Okay. And then from that, you can adjust, like say, for example, the location of the balls, the location of the switches, for example, you can do that in a much faster way compared to the, you do that in the manual method. And once you have optimized that, then you print that in a paper wherein you can translate it into a physical prototype. And for more often than not, the result is not really that perfect in the first run. Uh, balls are nowhere to be found. Switches are put in the most compliant unpleasant location so and then the good thing is software is that you can readjust it in a fly when you have the software rather than you do it in a manual so that's what we did in our power chips no? um, uh, with the help of the engineers also uh, Serfier, so in the design of the sector power tubes so we will able to uh, reconfigure the, the, the systems in a fly rather than you do it manually. So um, it's actually a good tool when you do the, when you, for example, when you say design thinking, when you do the prototyping. So that is where uh, solid edge uh, software is quite important because you can uh, do it in a manner that that's not costly. Okay. Rather than you do physical prototype and then you find out that it's not good, then you go another create, another <laughs> go with materials, do it again. But if you do it in software, <laughs> I think the the cost is not that great. Or the cost virtually zero, not sure. And then you can mix and match, and then you can adjust uh, features on the fly rather than do it in a physical manner. So that's what uh, why uh, solid edge is quite important when we do the design process of our software. Yeah. Okay, so that's very important. Know that uh, you were able to minimize the physical prototype because that's yep. very costly you know, in creating physical prototype. Although it's still, uh, I think it's it's still important maybe in the end part, no, but a lot of iterations is happening, revisions and optimization of design. Yeah. So thank you for that, uh, Prof. So uh, just a follow-up question here for uh, still for Engineer uh, Pasqua. How will the design thinking be more emphasized in the academic institutions who are using LMS, uh, learning, uh, learning management, management also. systems, no? uh, learning Platform management systems in instructions uh, during this time of uh, pandemic. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, how do we do the design thinking? Yes, uh, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, programs actually and mostly most universities are actually conscious of the importance of the design thinking and it's not just design thinking there are other forms which are actually quite the same uh, I would say they share common com common functionality so one of that is uh, um, yung TPAC model no? technological pedagogical content knowledge and also in our university we have CDIO conceive, design, implement, operate. But uh, they are quite, uh, these are the different paradigms or the different principles that what one should use to teach. But I think centric to all of this is the design thinking. So regardless of the name, I think design thinking is embedded. And some even are not said directly, but basically it's design thinking on the works. And if you do LMS, in the university and the question was, how do we leverage the use of design thinking? So actually, no matter how hard we try to employ or encourage educators and students to do design thinking or these other concepts like TPAC and CDIO, it will always boils down to the application, the importance of applying what you learn, the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. So as an educator, you should make your classroom to be uh, in equipped or in a uh, classroom should be equipped in a way, or your virtual classroom per se, na pwede siya ma-exercise ang design thinking. And how to do that, so I so your number one point is require them for a long-term project. 
when I say long-term projects, it's not a project not only for one subject, but for the whole duration of their engineering field. And how do you get a, a lifelong project na yung estudiante mismo is willing to solve? Only if they knew that the project that you, they are solving is relevant. It's real. And it's effectively affecting a community. And if it is real, then there's always a drive to solve it. There's always a drive to do it. And because of that, magiging ano sila, uh, they are a quester of knowledge. They are a quester of uh, learnings in order to solve that real world problem. Rather than uh, just require them something na out of this world na hindi relevant no? in sa kanila or hindi relevant sa society. <clears throat> they are, uh, thinking is really, uh, we call this learning is quite irrelevant in that per se. So, so if they found the problem to be relevant by themselves, I think uh, the concepts that you teach will be much more appreciated and much more sought after because they will realize na, ah, I need pala trigonometry. I need pala algebra hmm. to design these concepts that will be able to solve the problem in fisheries, the problem in waste, something. No? So uh, in other words, require students to uh, solve real-world problems and develop projects out of that. And how can they work, develop uh, projects to solve that problem? Let's say design thinking is the tool. And you need uh, in the prototyping and the uh, design stage and the testing stage, you need the softwares that is being offered. And you can see also the link now. No? Mas ma-appreciate ng mga studyante na, ay, gamit pala talaga yung ano. So yung, yung softwares nila to, to solve these uh, issues na affecting us. No? Not affecting the US, <laughs> affecting the Filipinos per se. Parang ganun. So encourage our um, faculty to teach in that manner. No? Na integrate in the classroom the need to solve uh, problems that is, can be solved using design thinking and also the learnings that they learn from your course. Parang may, dapat may connection. Yep. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, in you mentioned this term, uh, prof, eh, and, I, and I would want to uh, uh, read this question from uh, Sir Felix. No? Mm. Kasi you mentioned this model. Eh. So, some academic institutions use TPAC. Maybe yeah. can, uh, TPAC model for instructions. No? So, as a professor, how do you view this in terms of Effectivity. How does okay. this supplement <laughs> compares with the OBE? Sir, paki explain naman yung mga ano, uh, initials so, nito. What does it mean? So, good thing na this was asked in the chat right away. So, TPAC was the first term I encountered. I only encountered it today, honestly. So, thanks for Google. Medyo quick Google search. So, may nakita ko search na. It's just a combination of pedagogical knowledge, technical knowledge, and context knowledge. You combine them together, and that's TPAC. So somewhat, it's a method of teaching, I think. So correct me if I'm wrong. But what I can see for my quick, you know, quick Google search is basically, as I said, um, it's just goes to another, another name. You know? So quite centric. Why do we need to combine pedagogical knowledge, technological knowledge, and content knowledge into one? Simply because in order for you to have an outcome-based education wherein you can teach effectively uh, a method wherein uh, students will be able, as I said, to pull knowledge from you okay, and embrace the, kumbaga, it's a technique wherein you'll be effective in making students embrace knowledge and get the need or the interest to embrace knowledge. Huh? So, ang bottom line lang kasi naman dapat is for all education is have we really made our students fell in love with the courses or the lessons they are getting from us? And the only way to do that is they experience it itself. They have the consciousness na what I'm learning is quite relevant to me. And I need this. No? So, you know, so... I think regardless of the name, CDIO, TPAC, design thinking, what's important is that uh, the concepts that is learned by students will be used to solve problems in the real world. 
So make the education realistic. So couple your uh, teaching with real world applications. And if you develop graduates like that, if you are trained to be like that, and I think that's what uh, companies are looking for when they graduate. And then they can translate that now. If they experience that in the classrooms, in their college, then it's a way of life for them. And when they go to the companies and industry, wow, they are so thankful. Now, thank you for developing this kind of students, which are quite adept in solving problems based on real world applications. So, so regardless of the name, so TPAC, that's also a very good concept. No? Uh, yun lang is... Uh, this concept should be realized in the classroom per se na uh, it's resulted results to physical outputs or tangible outputs or we say physical virtual outputs okay yep. <laughs> okay see thank you very much uh we'll just ano na lang, uh, answer one question before we move on to our next activity so uh, this one is from uh, sir fernando so should we be teaching again, another uh, no, sir, agile technology no? and uh, design tech thinking concepts on senior high school or in the college level or mm -hmm. even earlier in junior high school? So what are your thoughts? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, the earlier, the better the you can cascade it to the high school or even to the elementary you can cascade design thinking now you might have a question that uh, should it be difficult as an educator will i be needing a lot of trainings for this uh, so the answer is really not because um if you go to the various competitions Okay, so like, we will talk of competitions right now. I think Sir Jerome and I think Sir Engineer Phil, we live in a generation right now when we are in high school, we're in, when we talk of inter-school competitions, usually it's debate, spelling bee, quiz bee, math, math quiz. But if you look at competitions now for students, inter-school competitions, it's no longer that matter. It's now more in innovation. Mostly they pitch to solve real world problems. If you see that trend, no? Uh, if you look at the different competitions, uh, little na lang yung mga quiz B, spelling B. Mostly, they develop uh, teams to solve real-world problems like uh, uh, ocean problems, garbage problems, and so on and so forth. And in order for you to do great in this, that employs design thinking. That's it, first and foremost. No? Innovation will require design thinking. Now, in order for you to teach design thinking yourself, the teacher or the faculty should be also immersed in design thinking per se. They should also know what is design thinking rather than look at Google it and teach it to the students the way they I Google it. No, that's not effective. The teacher themselves must be uh, immersed also in that. And how do we fast track that? So usually our administrators are if they are usually kung hindi sila keen on design thinking. So you have a problem there if you are a, a champion in design thinking in your example high school for example and if your principal is not supportive then parang oh, parang ang hirap na no para kang hercules na you 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 try to develop design thinking to students only to find out that our principal is not that supportive and there's the principal is not supported or you have problems in grants but to circumvent this is quite easy just look for competitions in high school competitions at that ed or sa dost yes may mga competitions for young students and also yung mga undp sa un uh, every groups so there are competitions for students to do that. And if you join competitions like this, you develop a team and then make coach yan siya. Of course, make coach. So you will be trained on design thinking before you apply knowledge. And if you apply to this, okay, it's the name of the school that you're carrying. Tingnan ko lang hindi mag-approve si principal. <laughs> so if your team is on the top 10 of that competitions, no principal in this world will say, oh, tigil nyo yan. Stop yan. No, it's it's the 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 honor of the school. So that's how we circumvent actually no? you yung problem of uh, developing design thinkers. So if you find it difficult, there are a lot of resources and even grants being given to schools for design thinking because it's quite relevant right now. Yep. 
Okay, thank you very much. So it's really very important no, for students and schools really to, to be involved in uh, competition, design competition. Uh, actually, we did a design competition last uh, December no, for both the mm -hmm. industry and also for the schools. Perhaps we will also do it again. No? So um, thanks a lot for those uh, uh, answer and sharing your thought, uh, both engineer fair and engineer uh, Pasqua. So uh, our technical will be uh, will answer those for those uh, who were able to miss some of your questions no, because of the limited time. Uh, so let me just uh, give you a brief summary of, uh, so from based on the talks of, according to Prof. Pasqua, no? so we need to develop students that are in demand. So we need to foster uh, soft skills no? by joining, just mentioned a while ago, design competitions and be able to partner with industry thought leaders. No? So what, what we're doing right now is we are partnering with each other. And then uh, educators and students no, must go out of the building. But uh, of course, in, uh, Prof mentioned that to leverage on the ano, mga tools, no, in online tools naman even. So identify, of course, very important, identify problems no, and propose solution using digital technology, digital tools. No? So again, faculty also can learn from their students as well because of the project-based learning no, of, uh, methodology in design thinking. So for uh, engineer first, so he was able to share with us uh, the, the latest trends, uh, the latest tools of uh, the solid edge portfolio and how you can really turn your ideas into reality and really be able to simulate a real world products. So here in Stanford IT Learning, so it is our mission to help out schools no, further 